Hi everybody, my name is Mike. This is my YouTube page, Mox News. Thanks very much for tuning in. Okay, so um, have you ever heard the expression, I disagree with what you have to say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Um, this for me has been a guiding principle here on YouTube and long before anyone ever thought of creating YouTube. Um, uh, that was a really a, a principle of my life, of the way I live my life. You have the right to say what you want. It's important that you have the right to say what you want. Um, I always say the phrase a little bit differently. You know, the phrase is, I disagree with what you have to say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. I always say it a little differently. I always say it, um, I may not agree with what you have to say, but I will fight to my death to defend your right to say it. And the reason I say I may, I may not agree with what you have to say, because I may, I may not agree with what you have to say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I agree or disagree. Um, what matters is the concrete First Amendment block that was put in place, like, you shall not pass this place. Everyone has the right to say what they need to say. That's all there is to it. And, and... The reason that that concrete block is put there, the First Amendment, that allows you to express yourself, is not to protect speech that we all agree with, that we all approve of. It's there to protect speech that nobody wants to hear. And that's what they're really trying to get at. It's there to protect speech about you know, the government's lying to us about 9-11. The government's lying to us about why they're taking us to war in Iraq. The government's lying to us about... It's there so that people can't say, oh, that's not acceptable speech. Because it doesn't matter whether you approve or disapprove. I have the First Amendment and it allows me to say what I need to, what I believe needs to be said right now. And you must protect that at all cost. Any whittling away of the First Amendment, of your free speech rights, is censorship. You people are fighting for censorship. How can you do this? And and I and I don't I just there's this ideal of freedom that I love and cherish, and I just don't see people stepping up to defend it, to fight for it, to say, no, censorship is not okay. I, I you know, <sighs> the grocery clerk uh, at the store where I go grocery shopping once or twice a week, um, She's she's a really nice girl. She walks by the house on her way to work all the time. She always says hi. And um, I was checking out the other day uh, through her checkout line. And she says, oh, you want a safety pin? She's wearing a safety pin. She says, oh, you want a safety pin? I said, a safety pin? She said, yeah, you want a safety pin? I said, why, why would I want a safety pin? And she says, oh, that means you're safe. And I looked at her and I said, it's safe? She said, that means, that means that, you know, it's like a safe space around you. People can feel free, you know, feel free to be themselves. Like they don't have to um, worry that you're not safe. And I looked at her and <laughs> I said, I'm not safe. And she said, you're not safe? And I said, I'm not safe. She said, you're not safe? And I said, I'm not safe. And... This is a deal, you know, people that are trying to sell you safety are trying to sell you something. They want to take something from you in order for you to have that safety that you need so much. I personally don't believe there is safety. There is no safe space. There is no safe space, okay? And and generally the people that are doing this are just creating this lie 
and they want to do it. They want to take away your freedom. Here's a safe space, but you can't say what you want, but it's safe. It's safe. As long as you don't say what somebody doesn't say or it's not acceptable, then it's a safe space. It's not real. You know, the First Amendment is to protect heinous speech, speech that people don't want to hear, you know, against the war, against, you know, talking about Israeli war crimes. This is what they really want to censor. They want to Oh, you want to talk about Israeli war crimes? You're a hater, and 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 you need to be censored. That's what they really want. Oh, 9-11? There's something wrong with you. 9-11, no. Yeah, the government, the government doesn't lie. You know, we know the government. The government's there for us. No. The government is who is making this anger. The government is... Let's be real clear, okay? The people, the, the Nazis, or the alt-right, or whatever it is label you want to attach to them in order to make them okay to hate. See, <laughs> they come in with their hate, and we're like, oh, we hate them because they hate. Oh, we hate them. We're going we're gonna to kill them. We're going to suppress them. We're going to push them down because we hate them. So, so these people's hate, the Nazi hate, is poison. And your hate is is righteous white light hate. It's gonna cleanse everything, right? Come on, figure it out. You know, there's better way to handle this than than acting, you know, than meeting hate with hate. Okay, I mean, really, these these Nazi these Nazi march celebration things. We should make it a big party. We should all bring out lawn chairs, line the, line the sidewalks. <laughs> you know, we can we can, I don't know, glitter bomb them, whatever. We can, you know what I mean? It is and and, the, and while we're out there, and we're like boo boo Nazi boo Nazi boo right. While we're out there booming, booing them, we can take pictures and we can document them. And this is the thing, is there's this incredible amount of valuable information in hate speech. Which is, we now know who that person is. We now know inside that person lives this disease of hate. And it's really, it's like a mental illness, you know. If you're judging someone uh, by the color of their skin or <laughs> the length of their hair or their beard or, you know, their religion, then, you know, you are, uh, you have a, a mental illness because you don't know that person and you can't judge them. It's impossible for you to judge them. If you don't know someone, you can't judge them. So you're you're making shit up in order to be able to to hate them or whatever. It's 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 ridiculous. Uh, now it's beyond ridiculous. It's, it, it verges on mental illness, but. In, again, it's incredibly valuable information to have. If you're, if you're, you know, planning your gay wedding, your big day for your gay wedding, and you go to the bakery, and the bakery says, yeah, we don't like homos, and we hate gay marriage, so we're not going to make you a wedding cake. That seems like incredibly valuable information to have, right? I mean, you don't want, number one, I don't know why anyone would want to give their money to someone that they know hates them, right? If you know that these people don't like black people, why would you want to go to their restaurant, right? And give them your money or their business, whatever it is, give them your money, you know? Um, but beyond that, why, why on earth would you want them to have anything to do with your big celebration of, of, of love and, and unity and, and diversity and whatever, 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 you know? Um, 
why would you want that person involved at all? You want that information. You want to know before they poop in your cake batter and you serve all your wedding guest friends depa cake. Why you want to know this information. This is incredibly valuable information and you want to hear it from their lips if at all possible. Again, this is why I don't censor at Mox News. Beyond the fact that you have the right, when you see someone making a racist comment, making a hate-filled comment, making a trollish comment, you then know who that person is. So that further down the road, when you strike up a conversation with them, you know this person has this hate inside them or this mental deficiency or mental illness or whatever it is because hate hate's got to be some kind of mental illness although I believe it's programmed by the government and the mainstream media. all this anger is being programmed into it into you they want you they want a race war they want to lock down this country in martial law with a race war they want that you know they do the powers that be and who are the powers that be the government the giant corporations the super rich this is where all of your anger should be focused these other people, these mental deficients, the, the, the mentally ill, we have a little party and, and let them celebrate their celebration. Don't you celebrate diversity? Well, that's diversity. Celebrate it so that we can save our freedom. <sighs> okay. So I wanted to say something about about Kathy Griffin too, because I, I wanted to make this free speech thing earlier when Kathy Griffin did her thing and Bill Maher did his thing and and they apologize. You don't apologize for art, number one. Kathy Griffin, her art is comedy. That the, those pictures were definitely a form of art. You know, of the the decapitation pictures with Donald Trump. That was an art. That was a piece of art. She has the right to do that. Bill Maher, he was making a joke. And it was funny because it was true. Because he apologized and didn't want to. So he was exactly what he said he was. And, and him apologizing when he doesn't want to proves that he's owned and has masters. <sighs> Kathy Griffin, she is an idiot. Okay, again, I will defend to the death your right to make a fool of yourself. If Kathy Griffin was had the slightest bit of intelligence, she could have she could have made that such a good thing where she did the thing with the the Trump beheading you know all she had to do was go, oh you don't like that picture huh okay how about this one and you have Hillary Clinton in this hand right Hillary Clinton decapitated head in her hand going is that better you like that one don't you I know you like that one come on tell me you like it and then oh you don't like that one okay and Bernie Sanders right and then she got Bernie Sanders ah oh, traitor we all believed in you and you sold us down the road oh we all hate Bernie Sanders you know, and then she go, and here's my Christmas card, and Bernie Sanders in one hand, and, and Donald Trump in the other hand, and Hillary Clinton between her legs, you know. If she had the slightest bit of humor and intelligence, it would have been the easiest thing in the world to clear that up. But she doesn't. She was just trying to, to push people's buttons, which she did, and uh, she may or may not regret it. I don't think she regrets it. I think she got exactly what she wanted, which was the president and the president's uh, first daughter talking about her. Now, again, incredibly valuable information. You need this information. You want it. You want this speech protected. You want them to feel free to express it so we can document and know who they are.
And again, yeah, you know, there, this, it has to be addressed about these statues coming down, okay? These, these con, this Confederate statue that was pulled down by protesters, right? By angry mob of protesters. This is what the Taliban does, right? The Taliban goes and they blow up thousand-year-old, hundred-foot-tall Buddhas. They just destroy them. They blow them up so that no one can ever see them again. Why? Because they don't like them. Because they make them, because because they hate them. They hate those Buddha statues. So we got to blow up these thousand-year-old statues. ISIS, what does ISIS do? ISIS goes through and wipes out the, the um, Iraq is like the, 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 the cradle of civilization is what it's been labeled, right? And there's all these archaeological sites in Iraq, and ISIS just goes through and just blows them up. Just blows them up, just blows them up, just blows them up. Doing the same thing in Syria, too. That's how you people are acting. That's what you're fighting for with this censorship that you're fighting. You're fighting for censorship. This is the exact opposite of what we need. We need to fight for freedom. Every inch of freedom that's given away should be ripped from our fingers by the government. And it's the government. It's not these Nazis that are taking away your freedom. It's not the Black Lives Matter people that are taking away your freedom. It's not ISIS that's taking away your freedom. It's politicians. Politicians in Washington, D.C. and politicians in your local government. Our anger needs to be focused properly. The giant corporations are stealing all the resources of the earth. All the natural resources. They're poisoning all the water. It's just being ripped up and nothing's being left for future generations. Your anger needs to be focused in the right direction. We have very little time left. It's good that you're angry. Focus it where it belongs. Focus it where it can do the most good. You want to fight? Fight for freedom. Fight to protect everyone's freedom. As Mox News has done forever. Mox News, you look in the comment section, I don't censor you. Oh yeah, you just post mainstream media, to post this, you just post that. I'm giving you a platform where you can respond to these people that you say you hate so much. These people who are poisoning our society. I'm allowing you to correct what it is that they're saying. Whatever it is you feel needs to be said can be said there at Mox News. I'm not going to censor you like Alex Jones will. You can say... You go and look at the comments. Every single video pretty much talks about what a jerk-off I am. Every single one, there's comments in there about what a horrible human being I am. And I've never tried to censor you. You know, you can't go to CNN and watch a video and make comments about it. Saying, oh, fake news. Or whatever, you know, or, or a thousand other things that they won't let you talk about. Israel, 9-11, the drug war, police brutality. That These are the things they really want to censor. You think that you're just going to censor hate speech? No. The things they'll label, oh, you're talking Israeli war crimes? That's hate speech. You can't talk about that. We're shutting down your website telling you 9-11 truth no 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 that's that's hate speech you're you're hurting all those people you're hurting all those people and the memory of that you're defiling the memory of 9-11 censorship is wrong and and you're fighting for it
you're doing the job of the most horrible people on the planet, the people that want to silence the truth. And I'm not saying, I'm not talking about hate speech being the truth. I'm saying hate speech is incredibly valuable. And it's really information that you need to know. It's that simple. I'm out of hard drive space. I'm out of hard drives. I need some help. Hard drives are on sale today and tomorrow for sixty dollars. Two terabytes, sixty dollars. It's a new. It's a new hard drive. It's the same. It's the same manufacturer I usually get. Video production takes a lot of hard drive space. I need some help. I'd like to get two hard drives, sixty bucks while they're on sale for sixty bucks. Um, Please, if you'd like to help Mox News, stick around and continue to fight for your freedom. See, you, you know, I post all this C-SPAN stuff. You want to make a comment on C-SPAN? You go watch a C-SPAN video, then you have to go to C-SPAN's Facebook page, and then you have to, like, be approved by C-SPAN's uh, uh, Facebook page. Then, then they have to approve your comment on C-SPAN's Facebook page. Or you could just watch C-SPAN video on Mox News and know that your comment will be posted right away. And it won't be censored if they don't if I don't like what you what you have to say. I'm not gonna put a lot of uh, time into going, oh, this person's speech isn't okay. Because it's not again, that most of the time that's valuable information that we need to know about that person. Anyways, I could use some help. Um, donations are horribly slow during the summer. I need hard drive space. Please help. Okay, you can make a donation at moxnews.com, or there's clickable links in the text body of the video. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please fight for freedom. Please focus your anger where it should be focused on the people that are actually trying to take your freedom away. Not actually trying. The people that are actually taking your freedom away. This is where your anger must be focused. Okay, enough. My YouTube page, Mox News. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Mike. Stay cool. One of these days this war is going to end. Till that day. President Trump not the only one under fire in the wake of the Charlottesville violence. A social media campaign is exposing people who were at that right-wing rally, including a WSU student who was forced to resign as leader of the school's college Republicans. King 5's Alyssa Hahn is more on the fallout of what has become this widespread public shaming effort. Hello, Facebook and YouTube. This is me, James, here, obviously. With his own YouTube channel and 14,000 Twitter followers, 21-year-old James Alsip of Bothell outed himself as a member of the far right long ago. I would consider myself uh, paleo-conservative. I would consider myself more of a right-wing libertarian. In a phone conversation with King 5 last weekend, the WSU student said he went to Charlottesville to cover it for his YouTube channel. But on Saturday, he became one of a handful of attendees identified in the Yes, You're Racist Twitter feed, retweeted 20,000 times. In the fallout, both his school and the college Republicans, for which he led the local chapter, acted quickly to distance themselves and denounce the rally. The next day, Alsup tweeted his resignation, saying he would expedite the president transition process. I don't. Even, I, I wouldn't even call this social justice. I would call this. Uh, it's almost frontier justice. This is very much wild west. It's the social shaming campaign may feel good to the masses, but UW's director of communications leadership program advises against it. And that is the the, the beauty and the challenge of social media is that it gives us an immediate. Uh, release because we can do something so quickly, but also we do it without thinking. And it reaches the world. It's not like we're in our little neighborhood and we've said something bad and gossip. This is actually something that radiates outwards and has exponential impact. Hossein points out that in the wake of the Boston Marathon bombing, Reddit wrongly identified two men as the suspects. Right or wrong, this type of outing can mean losing face, losing jobs, or even friends and family members. 
what happens to them after that might be worse than the cure that we somehow enforced on social media. They may become even more disenfranchised to the point they become even more extremist about this, right? Alsop has disavowed the KKK and Nazism, but he said this about the social media movement attacking them. And so they're retaliating by trying to ruin people's lives. And look, I may completely disagree with Antifa or these other groups, but I think it is reprehensible and subhuman to try to go after someone's family for their political views. Perhaps all of us have to think more about what we say on social media and the long-term impact it can have on our lives. Alyssa Hahn, King 5 News.